Welcome back to the Rick Helps Real Estate Show. I did not have to report for jury duty this morning. Yay. I did get a text at 10 o'clock. If you watched the show yesterday, I explained it. I had to phone in the night before at 5 o'clock, and they said, well, your group is, doesn't have to be here tomorrow morning. It says, uh, phone in at 10.30 to see if you have to be here at 12.30. I said, that's like waiting for the cable guy. But I uh, didn't have to phone in at 10 o'clock in the morning. I got a text and said, your group has been released. So that was good news. Um, I mean, not like I wouldn't want to do it, but uh, good morning, Stephanie. Um, but, you know, it can kind of mess up your day or your week a little bit. But I understand that it is my civic duty. And did you know that if there are not enough jurors um, that they can find with this process of, of, you know, sending you cards and calling and stuff, they can literally go out in the street and pick you off the street and bring you into the courthouse. So. If you're on a lunch break, don't walk by the courthouse. Airbnbs, what are they up to? We're going to talk about what this change is for uh, security cameras, and then we're going to take a snapshot of the city of Glendale and see what's going on in that market. And we're going to talk a little bit about all the apartment building going on in downtown Phoenix. But let's jump right to Airbnb. They're banning indoor security cameras. Now, who thinks that's a bad idea? I mean, I don't want to go to a Hilton and have a camera staring at me. And I don't want to see a camera staring at me at an Airbnb. So they're no longer allowing hosts to use indoor security cameras, regardless of where they're placed and what they're used for. And this goes into effect at uh, April 30th. So they're saying if you got them um, and somebody calls us and tells us you have them, you're, you may lose your, your listing. But they're saying the new policy also introduces new rules for outdoor security cameras and will now require hosts to disclose their use and locations before guests book a listing. Now, I don't think this is going to apply to ring doorbells. I don't think there's anything wrong with having a ring doorbell on your Airbnb. Um, you know, it's nice to see who's coming, entering into your house, uh, and if you want to set up that notification. And it's a convenient way for people to get a hold of you if they're having a hard time unlocking the door, uh, which can happen. Hosts can use outdoor cams to keep tabs on can't use outdoor cameras to keep tabs on indoor spaces. Plus, they don't want cameras in some of the social areas like your back patio. So, um, like I say, this this makes sense. I'm glad to see that they're doing that. And also, did you know, those of you that are looking for homes and you're in the home and they have cameras in the home, which most of us do, um, there was a survey a few years ago that said 63% of homeowners watch you when you're looking at that home and they listen, I guess they just can't help it. Um, from bend, Oregon. Did you move there? Keenan? welcome. It's a nice spot to be a little chilly at this time of year. But anyway, 63% of homeowners are watching you. So, you know, be careful what you say, just, you know, know that you're being, you're being watched. I know that they like to watch on the ring doorbells because if you book an appointment, they kind of like to know if you're showing up and boy, in this industry, uh, you new agents out there, if you can't make it to a showing, please let the agent know. I mean, people pack up, leave their house for an hour or two and you don't show up. That is so irritating. So people leave their ring doorbells on and then they make sure that that 10 o'clock appointment actually came and went sellers. Uh, don't blame you for taking a, a peek. Uh, but, uh, I had a seller once that just lived with his webcam. And, uh, it was quite irritating. Somebody, a seller, a buyer would come in, walk around the house and he would call me and say, okay, they were there for 45 minutes. Are they going to buy it? It's like, really? Seriously? Uh, guy was, so Keenan is up in the Pacific Northwest here at Bend for another month. Well, happy travels, my friend. What's going on with mortgage rates this morning after the CPI report yesterday, 6.92 kind of barely moved says the trend is just a little negative, nothing major. They kind of took that CPI report with a grain of salt. Uh, but you know what? Marry the house, date the rate. Ain't working out too well right now for some people. Um, anticipating a March rate cut. I'm not feeling like we're going to get a June one. I don't think we're going to see a rate cut until we see signs of a recession. So I think central banks going to be very, very careful on that. So as we look at some of the cities here, we look at Glendale, they've got a CPI rating here of 177, anything over 
100 is considered a seller's market. So it's not a bad market for the people in Glendale for selling. And if you're buying, here's their inventory. It's up slightly. Now, I've seen a lot of um, comments from people saying, well, I hear inventory is really climbing. I'm not seeing it. I'm seeing, I'm going to jump over to my seven day moving average here. And you can see new listings went down a little bit and took a little uptick. New contracts went down a little bit, took a little, they're just following each other. And uh, it's not adding to a lot of inventory. In fact, we're, there's only a difference of 100 homes between yesterday and today. We got 16,000 something. Um, Stephanie here says rates have risen a bit in the last couple of days, slightly, 7 to 10 BP. Yeah, nothing, nothing major. Mesa seems to have moved into a seller's market more than other cities. Let me jump back there for a moment and look at Mesa. Um, well, it's going up a little bit. Um, last month it was 132. Today it's 158. Mesa is is a real different market. I mean, there the differences between certain parts of Mesa are staggering. Some of them are just they're awful, and some are just luxury. So it's it's a tough market to track. But you can see here that last year at this time we had 400 homes listed in the city of Glendale. And today is 437. Not a huge difference. Uh, last year, we started to dip tremendously as we did the year before, but then the wheels fell off the wagon typically um, as listings came on, as people tried to hurry up and grab their equity because they thought the market was going to crash. They wanted to get what they could. Listings under contract, about the same. 331 last year, 296 this year. Nothing alarming there. We have the average list price. Now, this is kind of bucking a trend a little bit here in that they kind of started out a little hot, and then they came down on their list pricing to $257 a uh, square foot. So it's nothing major, but I, I'm noting the decline in asking prices, which usually indicates things are slowing down a little bit, and so or people came in too hot too early. If I compare it to the rest of the market here, um, we did go up and now we're leveling off and kind of climbed up just a little bit here in our listing price and uh, the listing success rate remains about the same. So nothing standing out and shouting at us uh, there. So um, I w also went and looked at expired listings. Didn't really spike up. I looked at price changes, remains about the same. So if you're hearing that there's a lot of price cuts, um, there aren't price cuts uh, because the value of the home is going down. There's price cuts because the expectation was was too high. And, uh, you know, I don't blame. People are going to try that. I think I can get 525. Well, maybe I don't. Maybe I'm only going to get 500. So there's still a lot of that going on. Uh, the big thing here, and uh, we had a commenter ask us about this the other day, if I saw this on, on any of the news, and I didn't. Um, but thousands of new downtown Phoenix apartments are coming to a weird market. And uh, it is a weird market. And there's about 2,400 apartment units under construction, downtown Phoenix, putting the sub market in danger of being overbuilt. Now they're saying that, um, that they've been ramping up apartment construction throughout Phoenix for the past several years, which is causing real estate experts such as Peter O'Neill research director at Normark to expect a peak in new rental construction. So they're saying that, that we're going to get through 2024 and then it's just going to level off. There isn't going to be a whole lot of new construction as far as overbuilding goes, because they're going to have to absorb that. They're forecasting 20,000 units to come online this year across the region with downtown Phoenix accounting for 1,200 of those units. It's 20,000 overall. Uh, we get about 90,000 people a year moving to our, our area. So we've overbuilt in the short term and demand should catch up with supply in the next few years. But there's an interesting thing I ran into on this and it said that, uh, um, oh, one apartment project expands an entire city block downtown came to a screeching halt last fall, causing a flurry of mechanic liens against the project. The second phase of X phoenix a 29 story residential tower with 592 beds at third avenue and van buren has racked up nearly 50 million dollars in mechanics liens since october 23 including 35 million from a general contact tractor clayton org you imagine 
helping build an apartment complex and the place going belly up and then you got to put a lien on it. Ooh, that's rough. And uh, Stephanie says, love the charts. Your seven day moving average. I must be a chart nerd. There's nothing wrong with being a chart nerd. <laughs> Although I am PowerPoint averse. Just go to corporate meetings and see people put up PowerPoints. And especially in Mexico, it was rough down there. They, they would, uh, we'd have these international meetings and they would read every line. Now in a PowerPoint, as soon as that thing comes up, look, we've already read it. You don't need to reread it to us. Just to teach my guys, just go over key points. In other words, you put something up, it's got 10 lines on it with numbers. Your audience is way ahead of you. So just highlight something. As you can see behind me here, I highlighted that we we're up 30%. Let me tell you how we got there. But not in Mexico. And not just Mexico, South America too, as well. And they would go, okay. And they'd read every line. So I don't like PowerPoint. I went off on a tangent there for just a moment. But I am kind of a chart nerd as well. But here's what's going on nationally. This is year over year. Let me see if I can blow this up a little bit here for you. I'm blowing up the wrong page here. Bear with me. You got to click the mouse at the right spot, dummy. There we go. Map of year over year equity gain per borrower. You can see here 24,000 in Arizona, 49,000 in California, 30,000 in Washington, 32,000 in Florida. And this is out there because there's an article talking about how there's just not any foreclosures on the map. Uh, there is our equity or the number of homes in pre-foreclosure have dropped by 13%. And that's uh, that's quite a big downward trend there. So, you know, if you're hoping for foreclosures to show up and things to, to bust, you know, those thumbnails will say down 30%, down 50%. Is it just me? But I'm not seeing as many of them so far this year. Have they finally given up? It could happen. I'm not saying the market couldn't turn around and, and crash. Um, I, I met a young man at a bank yesterday and he said, uh, I had a friend tell me, and that's always a red flag for me that he thinks real estate prices will kind of start to come down if mortgage rates are staying where they're at. And I said, well, what I'm seeing is mortgage rates are staying where they're at and house prices are still going up a little bit. So might want to watch it carefully. I did let him know that he should go to YouTube slash Rick helps and subscribe. <laughs> I know here in LA resale prices have softened. Valuations are slightly lower. Now at some point there has to be some, I give upness. And it was interesting talking to this young man. He said, you know, I think I, I want to buy, I'm not in a position to buy. Something has to change. Either rates have to come way down. He says, which I don't think they will, or prices are going to have to adjust or somewhere in the middle. And I said, you know, the amount of people that I hear that from is staggering. There's always the waiting that's going on out there in this market. And that's what we're seeing. And that's why there's a lot of people on the sidelines and uh, incomes are not bad. Now, are incomes going to climb up high enough to help you with uh, the price of houses? Probably not. Probably not anytime soon. But there's a lot of waiting going on. So if rates were to get down to five and a half percent, this market would go nuts. I literally don't see that happening even remotely this year. And, uh, but that's just me. I'm no bond trader. So I just keep looking and reading the tea leaves. I will be on tomorrow again at eight 30 in the morning. And then, uh, we're going to see Pat Friday live at 3 PM as we go over the mortgage market until then, everybody have a great day. Take on the rest of the week. Take care.